Hey, Billy here, and I'm super excited to share some health information that I've been putting together for the last several weeks. And this may raise some eyebrows. This is something very taboo we don't talk about in our modern world culture. And that is bad breath, halitosis. Actually, I hate that word. Let's call it healthy breath. That's our goal here. So, and the reason that it's so important is your breath is actually reflective of your body's chemistry, your health. And so there are two main parts to the whole thing. Of course, your or oral hygiene, uh, the, there are two parts to that, your teeth and gums, and then a huge part of it that people just don't know is your tongue. And so first, teeth, gums, we all know it's important to brush twice a day, floss, that if you go without flossing, brushing for more than about eight hours after having food, that food is rotting and it doesn't smell good. So the other half of that being your tongue. Okay, this is something that has been hugely neglected and I know many people are aware that it's important to brush your tongue, but nobody knows to what extent. And here's, here are the facts that in the deeper back part of your tongue, there are actually bristles. It's a coarse texture so that when you're chewing your food, the back of your tongue actually puts an even fine, finer grind on it, which uh, helps you to better extract nutrients from your food by breaking it down more. That's important. Okay, now, uh, where we're actually going here is, okay, so we brush our tongue, um, but here's the thing is that pretty solid mucus gets into those uh, bristles, into the coarser part of your tongue. Nobody knows it's there, and I can promise you it smells worse than food rotting in your teeth. And so it's really important to brush it, but with the right thing. Your toothbrush, the bristles are too soft. Again, that, uh, that uh, plaque is a little firmer than we would think. And a tongue brush, this is an essential tool. And for whatever reason, you can't find these at too many grocery stores. Uh, so I really encourage you to get one. Actually. I have a few hundred of these, I've been giving them away, and if when you're on my website making a purchase um, in the code box on the checkout, there's a box for codes, just put uh, healthy breath, and I am going to ship one of these to you, I'll include it in your shipment, and I really think this is a valuable health tool, and I'm going to talk about uh, why. And um, so one side of this tongue brush is just coarse bristles. And um, it's really important to get back there. And that, uh, <laughs> okay, I know this is something we never talk about in our modern world culture, but it's important for your chemistry and the health of your relationships and things of that nature. So uh, one side is the brush. What I do is I brush my teeth and before I spit my toothpaste out, I go back in there, really scrub it out. I know some of you can only reach back so far before you gag, but when you're doing this daily, you're going to find that you get used to it and you can go further back. Okay, so the brush just loosens things up. The other side of this tool, super important, is a scraper. It's like the squeegee that the brush gets it loose and the other side scrapes. So first brush and then scrape it out and I I guarantee you, you are getting some funk out. When you really scrape it out, you're going to notice this kind of funky, mucusy, white, yellow, blah. And um, so I dare you, I challenge you to do this. And then once you do it, just give it a little smell. If you smell anything at all, people smell ten times that. So um, you're getting that funk out, and uh, it's essential. The whole thing about trying to use mouthwash and breast strips and things of that nature is totally ridiculous. First of all, uh, mouthwash, it's alcohol. Alcohol dissolves the mucus in your mouth, it makes your mouth dry, and healthy mucus, saliva, or excuse me, not mucus, but saliva, is one thing that helps to maintain healthy, balanced oral hygiene. And then those breast strips and Tic Tacs and things of that nature, uh, you're gonna go cheerily around your office and while you have a fresh minty taste in your mouth there's no question that bad breath has far more significant smell to it than a breast strip okay or bubble gum or whatever so brush your tongue 
every morning especially, every morning, because when you're sleeping, breathing, uh, of course we know the body uh, excretes toxins in many various ways. One is through your mouth, when you're breathing out. That uh, it's subtle, but that stuff overnight collects and um, it's funky. Promise. Okay, so tongue rush. The other half of what we have to talk about is your breath is reflective of your body's chemistry. I would say that this part has more influence on uh, your oral hygiene, it's just the chemistry in your digestion. And so just a few simple pointers to help. Um, and actually all the finer details are below, so I really encourage you to read this article. If you're seeing this video on YouTube, then on my website, infinitygreens.com, go to the blog page and you can, um, of course, read the finer print. And I challenge you to do this because um, it's important. It's reflective of your health and, again, relationships, love life, business life, health of the world. And the, okay, here are the stats. The American Dental Association did, uh, conducted a study to confirm that 65% of Americans have some degree of halitosis. And they're the experts. And thank God we have such amazing uh, doctors, dentists, and uh, oral hygiene support in our country. We're very lucky that we wouldn't live as long as we do if we didn't have these healthy teeth to chew up our food every day. I suppose you could survive on smoothies, but uh, I like my salads and things of that nature too. Okay, so where was I going with this? Um, okay, so foods that can, I mean basically they're just foods that have a, a good impact on your breath and foods that have a not so good impact on your breath. We know the obvious ones, garlic and onion, I'm not saying cut those out entirely, but it is balanced, not having exorbitant amounts of garlic every day it naturally is going to help. Okay, I would say the main culprits of bad breath would be processed sugar, uh, the reason being that it's so acid forming, it totally imbalances your body's chemistry, it produces an exorbitant amount of hydrochloric acid in your stomach, and it doesn't smell good. Um, alcohol. Alcohol basically just dries your, uh, dries your uh, healthy saliva and um, also creates acidity in your body. Uh, too much animal protein, I'm not saying you need to be vegetarian. Uh, but having meat all day every day is not ideal. Um, wheat products, wheat uh, kind of just glues things up, acid forming, things of that nature, and um, again, not asking you to be hardcore, but it is balance. And uh, this may surprise you, but too many cruciferous vegetables, raw is not ideal, things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, Great to have them in your diet, have them in your salad uh, every few days. And um, however, if you steam them, then you're fine. Uh, the reason is that cruciferous vegetables, the coarser vegetables, are just harder for the body to digest. And that constantly inundating your digestive system with, uh, with these foods uh, basically slows down your digestion, produces fermentation, which does not smell great. Um, and then, of course, there's smoking and things of that nature, too. And so, foods you can add to your diet. This is, this is nice. So, uh, I'm not saying you have to be hardcore strict with yourself. It's balance. Um, so, cutting back on some things um, is important. But adding things to your diet is easy, easy, easy. So, I challenge you to do this. Um, more easy to digest raw fruits and vegetables. Uh, fruits, of course, um, always being easy to digest. Um, there are some exceptions. Um, canned fruit, cooked uh, or pasteurized things like orange juice, not so ideal. Uh, uh, pasteurized citric acid um, definitely tweaks things in your chemistry, um, so that would be an exception. And then um, as far as vegetables, uh, leafy greens. Greens are number one. Number one thing to add to your diet, greens of any kind. Um, of course, uh, all living green things, the, ex <laughs> the exception being cupcakes and things of that nature. But uh, leafy greens, kale, spinach, chard, arugula, sprouts, all of those things help. Blue-green algae, 
Blue green algae has by far, okay, so it's actually chlorophyll. Chlorophyll in greens, chlorophyll is what makes all, all living green things green. Um, chlorophyll is basically a strong negative uh, ion charge uh, molecule that when taken internally basically just sucks up acids and toxins okay, to then be excreted. That's why it's so effective. It's effective for changing your breath, but also your body's chemistry, just purifying your bloodstream. And so um, the, the highest source of chlorophyll is unquestionably blue-green algae like spirulina, chlorella, klamath-like algae. I don't mean to brag about my stuff, but it is just the facts that um, that stuff is the highest impact, and that's the main uh, part of my Infinity Greens formula. And then, of course, the probiotics and enzymes help as well because enzymes help break down food and uh, the healthy probiotic bacteria are what really break your food down all the way to then properly be assimilated into your bloodstream and excreted from the body. Important. Okay, so, uh, and by the way, um, think about this. Blue-green algae was the first life on Earth. It's kind of a miracle how the sunlight just interacted with water and poof, life. Now, that was the gateway for all other life, that blue-green algae, Again, soaks up toxins. Before there was life on Earth, the Earth was extremely toxic because of volcanoes and meteors and acid, uh, acid rain and things of that nature. And so the algae sucked that up to give them, give them more uh, um, easy environment for other things to grow. And so, uh, again, you suck those things up out of your body with lots of greens and it allows your healthy chemistry um, hey, Arbear, what you doing? Come here. Come say hi. So Arbear is my cameraman, and uh, he's doing a great job. Come on over here. Come here. Welcome. Okay. So uh, you were telling me earlier that you had a health insight. So I don't know if you'll admit Arbear, but he's my puppy dog. Beep, 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 beep. And uh, right now he has some rawhide. Wait, what? Oh, so for dogs, rawhide and bones are the most important thing for dog breath. That bad dog breath is basically just tartar plaque on their teeth. Bones, chewing things, scrapes it off. One little side tip there. Okay, so uh, back to your diet. We got our greens down, raw fruits and the right vegetables. And that's it. Lots of water. Okay, easy, right? Just add more of those foods to your diet. Displacing uh, too many of the other foods that are acid forming and imbalancing to your body's chemistry and we're good and golden. Okay, well this has been fun. We'll... Uh, check back in soon. All the best. Good luck with your health. Bye-bye.